You're a good chauffeur, bud. <laughs> Welcome to this week's edition of Military Collectors. We are in China Grove, North Carolina, one of the most remote spots that we've ever been in on this show, right here at a location in China Grove where a collection from 1954 all the way up through present day has started right here. The Price of Freedom Museum in China Grove, which actually bore itself a start in 2004, but it all started here in 1954 by Bobby Malt, and he is a resident from China Grove, and that's our focus on military collectors this week. Roger that. Well, Military Collectors has found another jewel of a collection right here in the state of North Carolina, China Grove to be exact. I have found probably one of the most extensive private collections of artifacts from dating back to World War II. Um, well, I tell you what, I've got to introduce the guy that owns it, to put it all together, and we are in basically a replica of his living room during World War II, and it's Mr. Bobby Malt from China Grove. Bobby, God bless you, my friend. And it is such an honor and a privilege for military collectors to be here to showcase this week what you have collected your entire life for. And in much like this home uh, setting here in, well, what it really is, the Price of Freedom Museum, which you started, uh, tell me a little bit about about the Malt family, okay? Because I think this room kind of says it all. This is kind of where mm -hmm. it started in World War II. Right, we moved down from Salisbury in 1939 and um, where the old Porky's barbecue is now. And it was nine children in our family and mother and dad. And uh, four of my brothers was in service and uh, we had three of my brothers was missing at times. So, and uh, two, uh, one of my brothers had two ships blowed out from under him. And then another one in the Navy, the USS Mayrant, it was hit by a German torpedo. And uh, then my other brother, uh, he crashed on uh, Oak, um, Bougainville. You know, from that, you started the station in 54, right there in, right. in, in China Grove, and that began your collection. Uh, mm -hmm. You just have to uh, really recognize the uniqueness of having a filling station in a small hometown mm -hmm. in North Carolina. And then in 1966, that's the height of the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. um, you're now collecting things, and that, that really is what right. started the collection here at the Price of Freedom Museum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the first item I got, Dan Ritchie was a, a Oliver dealer in China Grove. He gave me his uh, uh, hat and uh, his medals and all, and I had uh, told my brother, I said, you know, uh, my heart is set on something uh, way down the road. I don't know what it is, but I'm not going to buy or ask for anything. And so now I have 1,200 uniforms, received 1,200 uniforms. And all of the artifacts that go with them. And so, you know, what I want to do is, on Military Collectors this week as well, I want to take folks through the various services that you all pay tribute to here. Um, this is a great volunteer organization. So we're going to go basic service by service here on Military Collectors to show these folks who love collections exactly what you've amassed here. And folks, stay tuned because our next segment coming up Bobby is going to take us through each one of the service rooms of all the different things. And these are from actual former service members. Their families have brought them in. All mostly, I would say, probably 80 to 90 percent from North Carolina. And they have wanted their artifacts to live on through the Price of Freedom Museum. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
and welcome back to Military Collectors. We're in the room that started it all in 2004 here at the old school building just outside of China Grove, North Carolina for Bobby Mauld. And of course, all of these items that you see here in the museum, especially here in this room, all began, well, they really started at the gas station in downtown China Grove. It was a marathon, then it was a Texaco, and then of course today, um, as all oil companies change, but Bobby's still in business. He's still ringing them up, one vehicle at a time, still pumping gas. And you know, Bobby, I will tell you, this is such a special room to you because this, this really started the collection. You're right. Mm -hmm. 1966, started in the service station. And they brought all of these different items. Folks would just drop mm -hmm. them off. You know, how does the word of mouth from 1954 to 1966, how did folks know that you were interested in doing this? Well, I think uh, the service station, you have to give it credit because people uh, had known me a long time, you know, in business before that, I think. Well, it was trust. They trusted me. But. Well, and you know, one of the key things I think is, is you didn't pay for it. Uh, they wanted this stuff to be displayed. They wanted it, mm -hmm. their legacy from their family member to live on, and you've done it so well here. And the one thing uh, that I find so unique here is that when people come through and they ask you to see where so-and-so's picture and uniform is, you can take them right to it. Now that's remarkable. But Bobby, you have done something I think special here in China Grove with the school district and it's a mandatory class for all fifth graders within this school district that they have to come here. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, they, it's mandatory that all fifth graders will attend this uh, uh, the, uh, school and we give them uh, on a scavenger hunt and then after an hour we put them in a classroom and we teach them about the landing of D-Day and uh, the sacrifice has been paid for their freedom coming up here that day or they would never be able to come up here. Well, and then of course, how many kids normally come through every year? Uh, well, uh, in eight years, we've had 14,000. Oh my goodness, that's just mm -hmm. tremendous. Well, take me just a little bit real quick through the steps of the museum. Um, you've got the museum arranged off of each one of the old classrooms. You've redone them all and you've got them all uh, basically designated for different services. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I have the Army, <clears throat> the Army room and Navy room and all each branch of service has their own room in it. Then you've, you've basically laid out, uh, you have an auditorium over there, which is right. really, uh, I think that's very, very special. Um, you've got uh, a library over there, which is, I think, is, mm -hmm. is just very, very unique. Because, you know, even small kids and even us big kids still love to see how, you know, this mm -hmm. stuff uh, can be displayed. And, of course, then recently, uh, the, the replica of the 1940s home. Mm -hmm. uh, which is, I think, is so unique. I don't believe I've seen that. Of all the collections that we've uh, showcased on this t on this TV show, has never seen that. That was all your vision. Tell me mm -hmm. a little about, about that. Well, about the order to worm, what I can't. <clears throat> uh, most of the servicemen in World War II, they would not talk to their families about the war, and they would talk to me because I had their uniform. And then some of the children said, did Dad tell you about that? I said, yes. Well, will you tell? I said, no. You have to have your dad to tell you. So uh, another thing that I'm going to do in the auditorium, uh, we got a screen that we were going to pull down. Uh, when the music, uh, if there's two or three groups of musicians and they change, <clears throat> then what I'm going to do is pull the screen down and play the videos of two or three World War II veterans, and uh, this is my thinking on that, that uh, ones that tried to get them to talk to them and they wouldn't, they can say, Saturday night, I'm going to see my granddaddy at the music. There you go. 
Well, Bobby, I tell you, you have just done a tremendous job here, and there's more to see and more to tell here. But folks, stay tuned. When Military Collectors comes back, we're going to walk you through this 1930s school that now houses the personal collection of all of these service members and all of the folks here who have dropped it off and left it with Bobby's Trust. After you, sir. Well, Ooh. folks, this is the China Grove Price of Freedom Museum. This is the old school building that was built in 1936. Bobby was born in 1934, and so it's so appropriate that we are back here now today that he has taken over and he has built the Price of Freedom Museum. And let's go in, sir. The United States Army. Caissons keep rolling along. And you know, I will tell you, although I'm partial to the Army, I don't really believe I have seen a personal collection like what you have amassed here. Mm -hmm. Kind of just, let's just talk a little bit about some of the things and the items that these folks have left you in order to display because it's so special. Uh, this gentleman right here uh, is the one that uh, Don uses to teach you school children about the D-Day landing. That's the way they were dressed and everything. And what, uh, one night I came up here to do some work about 12 o'clock and I did not realize that he brought that in here to you know? And I was over there and when I turned, I, I thought somebody was standing in there watching me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he was guarding you with his yeah. B-A-R. There you go. Bob, before we leave, I want to show you one thing. Okay. There. Uh, I really stand and watch it a lot of times, and this was Ralph Stevenson. He was in the Air Corps at that time, and uh, he flew 35 missions, and on the 35th one, he was shot down and uh, uh, taken as prisoner in uh, Germany. And plus, he also served World War II and Korea. Yeah. Wow, and he was a prisoner of war from 44 mm -hmm. to 45. Wow. Well, I, I know now, is his family local here? No, uh, he didn't have family. Really? No, he was from up north, but he didn't have. How did you acquire his items? Someone at the station recommended him to come and look at the museum. And you know, it's so, yeah. uh, it's so unique that it all comes back to the mm -hmm. service station. Is that not, I don't believe I've ever heard of another story where what you have amassed here started at the filling station. Right. That's just really so special. Well, shall we go look at some others? Okay. We got a lot of other things. That's what's next. What room are we going to go look at next? Navy room. The Navy room. Okay. Which is special to your family? Yes. Both your brothers in the Navy? Okay. So you had two brothers in the Navy. So two. that room's got to be special as well. Oh, yes. Two in the Navy, Ray and Claude. Well, and I'm going to ask you now, how many members of your family, uh, your brothers and sisters, are, le are left alive? Um, I sent one sister and myself. And that's it, out, yeah. of, the, out of the nine in the family. You know, mm -hmm. it's, and it's so unique. Of course, back during those years, uh, it was not out of the ordinary to have nine members in a family. That's right. You know, everybody had to help. So, yeah. Now, now, what makes this room, other than your brothers served here, what what is makes it so special to you personally? Well, uh, I have a picture of, of Mr. Elliot, and he was leaving out of Pearl Harbor, and when uh, Torpedo hit his ship, uh, West Virginia. Mm. And right here is Mr. Elliot's picture. <clears throat> and when I opened my museum for the first time, <clears throat> he had the opening and the prayer for me. And so he was here. Yeah. Back in what, 2005, 2004? Yeah. Wow. Well, I will just tell you, you know, for such a short time of of only having 14 or 15 years to put something like this together, mm -hmm. um, you've just done a tremendous job. Um, and I know you've had some volunteers to help, uh, but, you know, it's your vision yeah. and, well, and, and, you know, it's, it's just special. That's what I always said and I always learned, don't take credit for it. But the thing about it is I have to take credit 
the Lord gave me the vision. And if he hadn't sent 70 volunteers, it wouldn't have been nothing here. Well, what's next? I can't wait. Let's go see the next room. Now, is it Marine Corps or the Air Force? Uh, it will be, you want to go in the school room? Well, we can. Now, tell me a little bit of the history about this specific room, Bobby. Now, uh, this, this was, this is kind of what, for first and second grade used to be taught right. back in the mm -hmm. day? Miss Boston taught it. And so now you use this for the fifth graders, right. for them to come mm -hmm. in and, and reenact and relive right. history right here. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's so appropriate and it's so wonderful that you do this for these kids. And of course, uh, I see the, the, the teacher up on the wall and old, old pictures of mm -hmm. students from the day. Um, so, I mean, you know. And now you've also got a legacy here, and here he comes, uh, Bobby Harrison, right here, Bobby. Pleasure. Tell me about this gentleman here, okay, because... Well, I want him to carry it on. And most programs I've started in the past, and I, I usually do them 10 years apart, and most all of them uh, go for a year, and then they would say, too much work. But they don't have the heart in it. And so Bobby does. Yep. H how did you find this guy? Well, <laughs> how did we find each other? Well, we, we, we go back to the 70s whenever he started the neighborhood softball park. Uh, and then I started patronizing his service station, you know, after I got my driver's license. And then just stayed in touch with him over the years. I've always had a, a passion for history. And whenever I heard he was opening a museum, uh, brought, got one of my friends to come over and bring his military Jeep for the, the first open house in 2006 and then I acquired my Jeep and started bringing it and then I started volunteering here in 2008. Oh, there's one question I want to ask you. Okay. Why do you think that the uniforms hanging in those windows are different branches of service when the rest of them got a room of their own? Hmm. Well, Looking at all these pictures from the 30s and 40s and throughout history, uh, could it be that those folks went to school here that served here? Is You're that right? Is that correct? You're number 10 that come up with that answer. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you. Well, guys, I will tell you, it has been such an honor and a privilege here to have you guys um, on Military Collectors this week. Um, I promise you that we're going to come back because this is one of the very few collections that continues to evolve. The service station, it all goes back to the service station in China Grove. And the passion that this man has had is now passed on to you. Uh, I know he's still going to be involved. But that's what Military Collectors tries to showcase, is the passion of collectors just like him, just like you. And one other specific guy that we're going to talk to folks when we come back on our segment of Military Collectors and our final segment here at the Price of Freedom Museum in China Grove. We're going to talk to a guy who has a special attachment to this museum. And he also has a special attachment to these two guys. So stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to introduce him to you. Well, folks, here in our final segment of Military Collectors this week, I have to introduce you to a very special guest, a good friend of mine that I've known for several years, many of you all back if you grew up in the 80s and the 90s. And here in the South, you ate at Food Lion. You recognize this gentleman because he did the commercials every week for Food Lion. Uh, and I'm talking about none other than the one, the only, Mr. Tom Smith. And here, Tom, I will tell you, I have to shake your hand because I, I just have to have the folks out there understand that you have a special connection to this museum, okay? We're going to talk about Food Lion here in just a minute, okay? okay. And your, your career there as the CEO. But you are so generous and such a uh, guy that just absolutely believes in causes. Uh, we're going to talk about that too. But I want to talk about this special place, the Price of Freedom Museum here in China Grove. This is the very stage when you were a youngster in 1947 to 1955. You went to school here. That's right. Well, what was it like back then? Okay, I know your pictures on the wall and gosh, in the little classroom in there for first and second grade, but what does this place mean to you now that it's come from elementary now to a museum that you support? Well, it's, it's just great. I, I attended eight years here 
uh, we had two classes per teacher and uh, it, was, it was pretty rural, no air conditioning like today, and then to, to see it become a storage building for the, for the county was uh, quite disappointing. And then Bob came in and took it over, and gosh, it's just exciting what, what he's done to make it such a great museum. Well, you know, and I think one of the special things, too, is, is uh, and folks on a, a later show here of Military Collectors, this gentleman is a collector in his own right, okay? Now, we're not going to talk about that today, other than to tell you uh, that we're going to be back up here at the Price of Freedom Museum here in China Grove at some time later uh, in 2019 to 2020, uh, this gentleman is helping them build a building for a wheeled vehicle collection, uh, of which he has a very, very close connection with as well. And so we're going to be talking more about that later. But I want to just talk a little bit about the enormity and the mission and the focus about what Bobby has put together here at the Price of Freedom Museum. Well, to me, it's just amazing that an individual could bring all this together. And Bob's such an honest guy and such a straightforward guy that people really trust him. And so they want to leave things that they have from the past here so other people can enjoy it. And yet they know where to go to see it if they want to see it. The other thing that's so important I think he does is, is teaching, uh, teaching the fifth graders, letting them know. Of course, the teachers teach about World War II, but uh, no, there's no connection better than seeing the actual things. And Bob has his heart in this. He, he works so hard. Uh, him and Bobby are just great people. I've, I thoroughly enjoy knowing them. God bless you. Thank you for so much what you do here for the guys here at the Price of Freedom Museum. And I'm looking forward to coming back and doing another Military Collector Show because I want to showcase a special collection that you have. You, I'm just telling you, he has a military vehicle, wheel vehicle collection that's really unmatched in these parts. He's got a John Deere tractor collection, okay? I know it's not military, but it's just about the passion of collection. Plus, he's got a museum over there of all of his wild animals that just is unmatched mostly by any museum around the country and it is absolutely superb and we're going to showcase that on a later episode of Military Collectors. Join us. We'll be right back here again next week with another episode of Military Collectors.